Hi guys, welcome back to the third and final video in section 20.6. Uh, we're looking at three different kinds of reactions that alkanes undergo. The first was a combustion reaction, the second was a substitution reaction, and the third and final one is called the dehydrogenation reaction. Now that's a long name, but it actually is a pretty good name. D means you're taking away hydrogen, right? So if we did this in more common English, we'd say a reaction that removes hydrogen, or a hydrogen removing reaction. Here's an example set up. If you were to look at this, this would be the extended formula for ethane. This is an extended formula for something we've not seen before, and this is diatomic hydrogen, the have in have no fear of ice cold beer. First thing you're going to have to do is be able to identify these, and the way you'll identify them is by recognizing hydrogen as a product. A second way you can identify them is one of the products will always have this double bond, these two sticks, right? One on the bottom, one on top. These two bars or sticks make a double bond. If you're looking at a chemical formula, it looks very much like an equal sign. The product will only have a single bond. So let's take a look at what happens here. Basically, you've got to remove hydrogen. Okay, let's start with this one. We're going to pull that hydrogen off, and that's going to become one of these. But now you've got this issue. This carbon was bonded to the hydrogen. So the carbon now has this bond sort of hanging out here. You can't just leave a carbon with only one, two, three bonds. This fourth bond has to be connected someplace. Let's remove a second hydrogen. Let's remove this one right here. Same thing, this hydrogen gets pulled off. It becomes the second hydrogen. This carbon bond can't just remain open, so to speak. It has to connect to something. What happens is we have one carbon bond left open on this side, a second carbon bond left open on this side, and they have nothing left to bond to. The hydrogens have been removed, so they decide to bond to each other. Now these two carbons are bonded here. This open bond and this open bond connect to each other to make what is effectively a second carbon-carbon bond. That's the reason that in dehydro pardon me, in dehydrogenation reactions, the product always has to have a double carbon-carbon bond, and there always has to be hydrogen, diatomic hydrogen, as a product. Now you say, could I do this a second time? Could I remove this hydrogen and this hydrogen? The answer is yes, you could. You would make, right, these two would combine together to make a second diatomic hydrogen. This open carbon bond and this open carbon bond would join together to make what would now be a triple bond, you say, well, can I do it a fourth time? Now the answer is no, and I'm not quite sure why that is. So I'm going to make something up that I think seems reasonable. What are each of these bonds? Well, each of these bonds represents two electrons. So here you have two carbons sharing two electrons between them. Here you have two carbons sharing two plus two more is four electrons between them. If you were to remove this hydrogen and this hydrogen to make a triple bond, you would now have two carbons sharing two, four, six electrons between them. And what happens is that all of those electrons don't really want to be together, right? Um, they're, they're, they repel each other with a pretty strong force. And so what I think happens, the reason that nature doesn't really ever make quadruple bonds is that there are just too many electrons packed into too tight a space, and nature doesn't like that, right? So you can have double bonds, you can have, pardon me, you can have single bonds, you can have double bonds. In the next section, we'll see triple bonds, but I don't believe there is such a thing as quadruple bonds.